Are you ready to turn your furniture flipping dreams into a profitable reality? Well, welcome to Lemons to Lemonade Furniture, where I bring you guys insider tips and strategies for selling furniture and selling it well on Facebook Marketplace. By the end of this lesson, you should be a seasoned pro if you put all these steps into place. So let me show you how it's done. Hey guys, I'm Kara and selling furniture on Facebook Marketplace has completely gotten my family out of debt and landed us on the Dave Ramsey Show. And today I am sharing my seven best insider tips and tricks to help you master the land of listing on Facebook Marketplace. Let's jump right in. Starting with tip number one, and that is strategic pricing. Be sure to set your prices that reflect the value of the furniture that you flipped and attracting potential buyers. You're gonna to wanna to research your area on Facebook Marketplace and find similar listings to what you are listing on there. Analyze the prices of your competitors in the area. Look at the condition of the pieces that they're listing. Are they on par with what you have? Is it real wood versus MDF particle board? What is their listings compared to yours? You're going to want to go through quite a few of them to get an idea of what your average range for the piece that you are listing is supposed to be at. So don't look at cities that are far away from you or other furniture flippers that you found on Instagram or even YouTube to set your prices. You're going to want to make sure that you're staying within the range of your area. Now tip number two might be one of my favorites and that's captivating photography. And there is such a really neat thing that just recently came out to help take your pictures to the next level on Facebook Marketplace. It's completely free and let me show you how it's done. Instagram released this new function in their stories platform. So you're gonna head over into your Instagram account, open up the stories tab, not the reels tab. It has to be the stories and you'll sort through the pictures on your picture roll. Once you find the picture of the piece of furniture that you want to stage, you'll pick your favorite one and it will open the app like so. Once you found that picture in the upper left hand corner, there's this little square box. People keep telling me they don't see this box, but you need to make sure that you're in your story settings and not in the real settings because they are two different things. Once you hit that square box, it's going to take your picture and remove the background. And you're gonna be left with just a floating piece of furniture. In this case, it's a dresser. And from there, it's going to give me a search bar and I'm gonna type in the prompts of what I want the background to look like. Upscale Rustic Farmhouse is the one that I've used a lot and you can choose whatever you'd like, but that's what works for me. It's gonna kick out two photos with your suggested background attached. If you don't like either one of those, you can hit the circle arrow button down at the bottom of the screen on the left-hand side, and it's gonna produce another picture. You can hit that as many times as you'd like, and it'll produce as many pictures as many times as you hit that button. You can even go into your prompts where you gave it the prompt to what you wanted the background to look like and change it completely. Once you hit next, this little box is gonna pop up. Pay no attention to that. Put your finger on it, hover over it, and this little trash can was going to appear. So just drag that little box into the trash can and get it off of your picture. Now that that's gone, hit the three little bubbles up in the right-hand side corner, and it gives you the option to save this to your photos. Now that you've got the image saved into your pictures, you can exit the Instagram app and post these AI staged photos over onto Facebook Marketplace. You do not have to post these onto your Instagram at all. All you're doing is saving them into your camera roll. It's the perfect way to help the client envision the piece of furniture in a beautifully staged home without costing you any money on staging materials. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm gonna run through a few of these examples for you so it's see, you can see how it works with different pieces of furniture that I've sold using this exact trick.
writing a compelling description. Now, how do you write a really good description detailing what you're using? Well, you want to highlight the unique features that your piece has, the quality that it's in, and the potential benefits of that piece of furniture. And be descriptive as possible. Make it so the person can kind of see or feel that piece of furniture into their own home and make it desirable to them. Be sure to list any extra design elements that you've added, any extra, maybe it has drawer liners, maybe you added feet to it to elevate the piece. Is it real wood? What things can you put in that listing to really attract and highlight that buyer that you're going after? Be sure to communicate all of those benefits that you've added really well. Always put your dimensions, of course. Explain why it's valuable to have an investment like this. Is it durable, functional, versatile? Is it highly in style or highly desired after? Be sure to emphasize all of those qualities in your listing so that it stands out from everybody else's. And a really cool feature that we have access to now, if you don't know what to write, put it into chat GPT and it'll write it for you. Tip number four is timing and seasonality. Are you listing around expensive holidays or maybe holidays in general where people aren't looking for furniture? Are you selling a desk in February when it really needs to be sold in August around school time? Timing matters. If you're selling a buffet, people are looking for those around the holidays when they're entertaining, but don't do it too close to Christmas when that money's already been spent. Slower selling seasons can usually be around summertime when people are traveling and just doing other things besides sprucing up their home. You won't see sales pick up maybe until back to school when people start spending more time in their home and they're looking around at things that maybe they want to uh, change out or change around just to change their design ideas. So keep that in mind. You'll also see another big pickup sort of after we get out of that holiday, Christmas, New Year's swing. People start paying off those credit card bills. They have a little more extra breathing room in their budget and then it will start picking up again on Facebook Marketplace about six weeks after Christmas, New Year's. The next tip is gonna be a little bit of a two in one, and that is how to keep your costs low. Be sure to buy large containers of paint and colors that are proven to sell time and time again. Can you reuse the hardware on the piece without having to buy new hardware? Do you really need those drawer liners for this to sell? Maybe it doesn't need gold leafing. Think about those things that you can remove or pare down on a project to help you still get a nice sale price, but not eat out of your bottom line. If you like loud colors and you're just doing it on one piece, maybe buy a sample size or the smallest size that that loud color comes in. Because we all know that even though this is beautiful, it may not sell time and time again, like white or black or a neutral color will these days. Another thing I like to buy in bulk is whatever I'm finishing my project with. So whether that's wax or polycrylic, I buy big sizes of these because I get more bang for my buck and I know I'm going to use it time and time again. So be sure you're investing in larger sizes with things that you're going to use a lot and smaller sizes on things that you may not use on every single project. That'll really help keep your bottom line smaller. When you're sourcing your pieces, always consider that asking price and see if you can negotiate that down a little bit. Think about how much time is it going to take for you to flip it? Because if the piece is a mess and there's a lot of repairs and it's going to take you hours upon hours, you got to be compensated for that time. What supplies do you need? Do you already own the majority of them? Do you need to go buy a whole lot? Is it going to be costly to buy the paint stripper or the gallon of expensive primer that that's going to use? Do some quick math in your head and figure out if that project is a really good use of your time, or maybe you can find something that's a little less expensive. Let's talk about tip number six. Now that you know how to list your piece online and get the best possible description and pictures up there and loaded, the offers start coming in. Let's talk about those negotiation skills. Before entering into negotiations, always determine your bottom line or the minimum price that you're willing to accept for your piece of furniture. Consider your things such as cost. What did you pay for that item? What is your desired profit margin? And what does your market value say you can get in your area? Understanding your bottom line is really going to help you negotiate confidently and make those informed decisions while you're talking to people that are interested. Think about the value in the project and not just the price. Instead of solely focusing on, on lowering the piece until more offers come in, 
maybe it's just time that you hold on to it until you can get that desired price that you're looking for. Maybe it's the wrong selling season and always take that into effect. Help the buyer see the value in the piece that you're getting and why your furniture is worth that investment. But be flexible also and open to all offers. While it's important to know what your bottom line is, you also need to know that these days, people are expecting a little bit of negotiation when you're selling on Facebook. And number seven, what are your value adding extras? What are the ideas that you can add on your listing, such as offering delivery services for a small fee? Are you open to customizing the pieces more to what the person is looking for? And is there little extra details you can throw into the piece to ensure that the person is going to be happy upon delivery or pickup? I always like to give them a sample of whatever paint I've used. I'll label it on the top. These are really cheap. I order them in bulk from Amazon and that way they can take it home. And if there's any oopses along the way or just life happening, they have a way to touch up their piece. If you have a Facebook business page, be sure to send your customer that link after they purchase the sale so they can follow you and they'll probably fall in love with other pieces that you're creating. This is an excellent way to get repeat business and custom orders. It's happened to me time and time again. Normally, if you do a really good job and the person loves the pieces that they buy from you, they're going to be thinking of other things they want to replace in their home. And when they start seeing your listings, they're going to know your quality and know that it's worthwhile to purchase from you. So be sure to send them to that page and you will get extra sales. And there you have it, folks. We have covered everything that you're going to need to know to sell furniture like a pro on Facebook Marketplace. From strategic pricing to compelling descriptions and effective negotiation practices, now you have the tools and the knowledge to maximize your profits and succeed in the world of furniture flipping. Don't forget to apply those strategies in your next furniture listings and watch those sales soar. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow furniture flippers. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to this channel if you haven't already and tune in next week for more valuable tips and tricks and flips. And I'll see you next time at Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.